Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church. We're really glad you, that you're bleh. We're really glad that you're here with us this morning. Um, I wanted to take a moment before I do a more formal welcome, um, and I'd like to take a moment and pray for Congressman John Lewis and Reverend C.T. Vivian. And this is actually a uh, prayer that our presiding bishop, um, Michael Curry, wrote yesterday. May John Lewis and C.T. Vivian rest in God's peace, and may we, like them, rise up to claim the high call of love, never to cease laboring for a just and humane society and world, always showing compassion, and daily living, humbly, humbly walking with God until, it got, until all of God's children are free. Um, I am humbled that we had such great leaders and that we lost them both in the same day. Um, I want to welcome you, and I want to let you know that the bulletin is posted in the chat right below, um, or right under the feed itself, there's a bulletin. Please click on that, follow along as much as you would like, or as little as you'd like. Feel free to text someone, peace, if you're by yourself. Um, please know that we are walking with you, even though we are through a video screen. And last but not least, I know we have some folks who've never really made themselves known here at St. Mark's, and I invite you as we go through this, at the end of the bulletin, you'll see a newcomer's form. Fill it out, we'd like to know who you are, we'd like to know where you're coming from, and we'd like to just reach out even if that's an offer of Zoom coffee. So please, fill out the newcomer's form. Again, welcome to St. Mark's. The service continues with our opening sentences. We are called different languages, different places, different people. Let us hear. Let us act. God be with you. And also with you. Together, let us pray. Creator God, on this day you open the way of life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. 
Shed abroad this gift of connectedness, of love, of goodness, and make it known throughout the world that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, and hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay, and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Thanks be to God.
dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well, whether there be any wickedness in me. Gospel of Jesus according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers. Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. And then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of Jesus. Well, good morning. I, uh, I apologize in advance if this is a little disjointed. I, I decided to rewrite my sermon after I heard of the death of uh, Congressman John LaRouche. So here's the deal. This gospel annoys me. This gospel actually, Matthew is, Math, Matthew's pushing all of my buttons this morning. I'm going to say it. I don't care for this story. I, I know you think it's because of the outcome, but truth be told, be told there are a lot of problems with this sermon. Um, as they say on Twitter, this does not check out. First off, the idea that the good seed will produce wheat only. Now, for the purposes of this sermon and my ability to get words out of my mouth, I'm going to use the paraphrase from the, me the message, and instead of referring to the weeds as weeds, we're just going to call them thistles, because later you will see me trying to say wheat and weed in the same sentence is not a good thing. So we have wheat and we have thistles. All right. So he put good seed out into a non thistled field in theory. And yeah, I guess, I, like, I don't know about seeds other than I f was out protesting at one point in time about Monsanto and seeds, but that's another life and another story. Um, perhaps you can get seeds that are perfect and that there's no, absolutely guaranteed, no ability to have a weed seed mixed in. 
But even still, good seed on soil that's out in the world also produces weeds. There are thistles everywhere. I've planted a lot of, a lot of seeds, good seeds, and I've dug up a lot of thistles. As a matter of fact, I used to have um, a great lawn in Minnesota back when I did things like care about my lawn. I dug out the dandelions and one year, all of a sudden, thistle starts appearing. Now, if you're not sure what thistle is, it's big, it's bold, it's green, it's spiky, it's nasty to take out of the ground. It always, you always get a thistle in your finger at least once. Um, so I was wondering where all these thistle seeds came from and the woman across the street came over who had an opinion about everything, God bless her. And she said, well, it's that woman down the street. I'm like, excuse me, which woman? She goes, it's that woman, she's putting thistle in her bird feeder. <laughs> okay, so apparently, even if you have good soil and good seed, those birds will defecate thistle into your life. Just saying. So, this idea of good seed produces only good results is, I say, hokum. Hokum, I say. So that bothers me. And don't even get me started about the representation of sin or evil or missing the mark as a personification of the devil or the enemy. That also is not one of my favorite theological stances in the world. I mean, I guess it can be helpful to think of an outside force that through no fault of our own, thistles are caused. I mean, the story is going off the rails, right? If you don't weed, even if you believe there's not many thistles in your wheat, you still would go out and weed them. But no, the homeowner says, nope, don't worry about it, we'll take care of that at the end. And I remember preaching a sermon where I was told very clearly that in the ancient Near East, weeds looked, were always these things called tares, and tares and wheat were impossible to take, tell, tell apart. So this is good theology. Hokum, I say, I say hokum. This does not help me at all to think about it. We don't wait till the end. I mean, it's all mental gymnastics to make this story work because the gospel is truth, right? Because this story is so annoying, we sort of miss some deeper theological realities here. How does thistle look like wheat? And if you're already thistle, can you ever become wheat? And if you're wheat, do you ever become thistle? I mean, the way that I've lived my life, I make choices to move towards God, which are really wheaty choices, but my thistly choices of drifting away from God, I become wheat and thistle in the same second, let alone living my whole life as true and pure. So I think that it really is this binary story that doesn't help us figure out who we are. It's not helpful. It's not helpful how we live our lives as people. And if you listen to this story, hearth and whole and take it all in, the moral of the story is to keep your little weedy head down and hope no one thinks you're thistle. See how I didn't want to say wheat? Wheaty head, weedy head, wheat, thistle. Are we both and? I think we are. And I know in my life, keeping my head down is not always the choice I should make. Think about what's going on in the world. Think about what you saw in the paper this morning if you looked at the paper. We have money not being spent on a cessation of a global pandemic. We're not gonna test, we're not gonna contact trace. We shouldn't spend the money to do that. The only way this is actually going away is for us to stay away from each other, to wear our masks, and to do things like contact tracing and testing. It's not gonna be in the bill? Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna keep my head down about that. Think about the financial crisis that's happening right now. In my home country of Canada, people are getting paid to stay home. People are being supported so they can keep their homes. Here, July 1, they could start eviction proceedings against people. Now, let's think about that as good Christian people trying to become wheat. We're gonna kick people out of their homes. 
where they can't have access to clean running water during a global pandemic. I believe this is thistily thought on our part. We can't keep our heads down. And what is going on in Portland, Oregon? We have unmarked forces from possibly DHS arresting people, taking them away in unmarked cars. I mean, I'm not one to jump the gun and panic here, but the term disappearing people is jumping into my head. Pinochet is jumping into my head. This is not the country that we should be looking away. This may well break out to be a constitutional crisis. This is not the time to keep our heads down and hope that people think we're wheat and not thistle. Which brings me to Congressman John Lewis, who, as you know, is known for getting into good trouble. John Lewis said this once, you cannot be afraid to speak up and speak out for what you believe. You have to have courage, raw courage. You cannot be afraid to speak up. You have to call out that we need money for this pandemic. We have to keep people in their homes. We have to call out the government for arresting people in unmarked vehicles and unmarked people. Senator Kamala Harris said, in the memory of John Lewis, let's continue to speak out against injustice and have the courage to make good trouble. It is saying that, that we believe that if we say something with a lot of power, with a lot of force, with our deep steaded beliefs in the mix, we can enter into a conversation. You can't keep your head down and have a conversation. You have to at times say what you believe and put your stakes in the ground. John Lewis did that. John Lewis said what he meant and he stood by it. He marched for it, he rode for it, he was jailed for it and he put himself on the line for it, both physically and mentally and emotionally, again and again and again. One of the stories I love that has come out about Congressman Lewis is that one of the men who beat him at one time in his life drove to Washington, D.C., got an appointment with him and apologized and asked for John Lewis's forgiveness. And John Lewis, without hesitating, said, of course I forgive you. That's what this movement is about. We work together. And I would say that we work for the kingdom of God. We are all kin. We would honor John Lewis by holding accountable the powers who will not pass a law that open the way for all people to vote. I mean, there are people who are saying nice things about him now that he's dead and gone. No, you want to honor this man? Pass the Voting Rights Act. Voting rights in this country have been stripped away in the last, year, last decade. People, you want to judge folks for not voting? Do you want to stand in the hot sun for five to six to eight hours to get your vote cast? We can't judge people when there's only one voting station open for 100,000 people. This is not right. We have to stand up to this. We can't put our little heads down and hope someone notices that we're wheat. We can't look away, for the world needs us to stir up our collective voices and honor what Congressman Lewis did, not to hold ourselves away and hope for the best. Maybe they'll think I'm wheat, although I might be secretly thistle because I'm making good trouble. The Jesus I follow calls me to act out and act into what's happening in the world today. We are called by God, by our conscience, by our high-mindedness to reach out to our government and say the abuses of our relatives dying because all of these people, these 140,000 people are our relatives. If they died in the United States, that's the number. If they died in the entire world, it's many, many more. They are all our relatives. We are called by our conscience, by our high-mindedness to say that it's abusive. We cannot sit in a field with our little weedy heads down and hope that the inactions and let the thistles of power, the thistles of fear, the thistles of DHS overreach choke out the life that we have been given. Do not sit back. There is a harsh judgment leveled on our generation. It will not be by the Son of Man in this story of Jesus explaining what's going on in this story. It will, we will not be judged harshly by the Son of Man. We will be judged harshly by history 
if we don't lift up our heads, if we don't call it out, if we don't call out this sinful and broken way in which this world is acting. We need to call it some good trouble. We need to cause some good trouble, some necessary trouble. We need to do it in the name of Congressman John Lewis. We need to do it in the name of our relatives. We need to do it because we are followers and we are called people who are to act in this world as wheat and not thistles. Amen. In the Episcopal tradition, after someone preaches, we all say the same affirmation together. Our affirmation can be found on the top of page seven. Together, let us say, we believe in God above, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female, of cisgender and transgender. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb, he ascended into heaven to be everywhere present and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit, Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for our families, friends, and neighbors. Holy Spirit, bind us to one another. We pray for all te ministers, teachers, volunteers, first responders, and others who guide and care for us. Holy Spirit, teach us to love. We pray for our leaders the president, the Congress, governors, mayors, members of city councils, attorneys general, and all to whom we have given governing responsibility. Holy Spirit, call us to justice. O oh God, you've always been with the traveler, the migrant, and the refugee. Today, we pray for the safety and wellness of the detainees, guards, and other staff at Wellesley Island Station, Buffalo Station, Orange County Correctional Facility, Albany County Correctional Facility, and Allegheny County Jail in the state of New York. Give those incarcerated courage and hope Give those who work in those places compassion and honor and help us all. Holy Spirit, call us to build a better world. We pray for those who are sick, who are lonely, who are scared, or who are in any trouble. Holy Spirit, comfort and heal our brokenness. We pray for those who have died and for their families. Holy Spirit, gather us into your embrace. We pray for ourselves, for peace, for clarity, for courage, and most of all, for the courage to truly love. Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. I invite your prayers at this time, either silently or aloud. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, you speak to us in a broken world, but one still full of hope. Help us to quiet ourselves that we may hear your still small voice and then speak and act 
with your powerful proclamation. Amen. The peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Good morning, St. Mark's. My name is Ryan Vaughn. As the senior warden, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the service and our community this morning. If you're new or visiting, uh, I'll just point out that there's a form linked in the description of this video where you can uh, fill that out and let us get to know you better and help you to get to know us better. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming to, who came to the annual meeting uh, last Sunday. Appreciate uh, your engagement with that. And also for everybody who joined uh, one of the Being Church uh, small groups this past week. And thanks to those who organized that, Julie Murphy, Chris Berendis, and Tracy Council. I invite you to the social coffee hour after the service at 11 o'clock. There should be a Zoom link showing up shortly. Or to the sermon seminar at noon. Have a good day. So apparently I've been doing a pantomime for a little bit here, so let's try that again. So I want to thank especially the virtual choir here. Um, we had 21 people who were willing to record themselves and willing to put themselves out on the line. And I think it's an incredibly vulnerable thing to do. If you're a member of a choir, it's because you get to sing with other people. You actually do an audio track, a visual track, and send it in. And I think if you get a chance to uh, somehow reach out to the folks, these 21 folks who did that, um, please thank them. It's a gift to all of us that it becomes a choir. And thank you to Jeff for putting the work in to make that happen. I want to thank Charmaine and David and Tracy and Elizabeth and Charlie for all the work that they've done. I want to thank all the folks who helped us put on the annual meeting on Sunday. It was uh, a very different experience for all of us. And um, you were all patient and kind and gentle with us as you waited to get in. And so we thank you for your time and your effort. And I thank all the people who were a part of that. They're all in the e-gospel. So if you haven't signed up for the e-gospel, please know that we would love you to do that so you know what's going on. If you could financially support us, there's an opportunity to do that in the bulletin. It's just right behind where I'm talking about or right below me, I guess. And also, if you're a newcomer, please feel free to take the time to fill out that newcomer uh, piece of information. I would love to be able to reach out to you and maybe set up a Zoom coffee or just a chat and make sure that you're hooked into all the different ways that we're trying to make a difference in this part of the world. And if you live somewhere else and want some help connecting, please contact me. I would love to help that happen as well. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to announce at this point in time, so let us walk in love as Christ loved us. The Lord into his garden comes, the spices yield a rich perfume. The lilies grow and thrive, the lilies grow and thrive. Refreshing showers of grace divine, from Jesus flow to 
this dry and barren ground, in springs of water may abide. A fruitful soil become, a fruitful soil become. A desert blossoms as the rose when Jesus is all his Spirit be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Spirit in our midst. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your Holy Spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, wind, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you. 
and we wandered far away, and yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us into the light in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with the saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Praise to you, holy and living God. To deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends and he took bread and he gave thanks to you and he broke it and he gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you and gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy God, speak in tongues of fire and inspire us to challenge and change and heal a broken world. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us a new creation. And make us for us a new creation, the body of Christ, given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Mary, Mark, Elizabeth, and all your saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundations of the earth through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. And now, as Jesus taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Together, let us pray. Redeeming God, who sustains us, we believe that you are truly present in the blessing of the bread and wine. We love you above all things and long for a closer connection to you. Since we cannot now receive the bread and wine, come into our hearts and help us to connect with you more deeply. We embrace your presence and unite ourselves to you. Never permit us to be separated. Amen. Our post-communion prayer is found on the bottom of page 14. Together, let us pray. God, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. Amen.
Now go in peace. Do what God wills. Follow where Christ calls. Pray for the gifts of the Spirit and may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.